Okay. So let's look at this. Is Turkey Tom video where he basically talks about Shadman and why people should not like Shadman and why it's kind of a big deal that Chris Ava Tyson was friends with Shadman. So yeah. So let's let's watch this. Let's watch this. You guys ready? Basically, if you want to know, like, my brief summary from what I can gather is that Shadman, back in 2016, made a bet with somebody and basically said that if Trump wins the election, well, basically somebody asked on Tumblr from Shadman, can you draw Keemstar's daughter giving blank to Trump, expletive to Trump, okay? Disgusting, by the way. And then real Shadman reply to it lol and then Chapman tweeted it out and says i'll do it if trump wins and then and then he did it then trump won and he added dolan dark and he said the results are in congratulations mr president and dolan dark and i don't know who this bk bk zoman is but they were like dolan dark said ha 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 it's been an honor and this bk zoman person said Shadman and his porn made this happen. So Shadman was apparently a Newgrounds creator and he was very, very popular. If you look at his Twitter, he's got like hundreds of thousands of followers. So yeah, but that's basically, that's basically like the, the summary. Basically, Shadman told somebody that he would draw Keemstar's daughter. Keemstar's daughter was eight years old at the time and he drew it. He drew this it, like disgusting image of Keemstar's daughter. And Keemstar and Colossal were some of the few people who were calling him out for this. And, but everybody else was just like chill with Shadman even after that. So I don't know. I find it very disgusting, you know? I find it very disgusting. So, I mean, I would have been mad if I were Keemstar and he was rightfully mad. So let's, let's watch this, okay? Let me actually make this full screen. It's vile, yeah. Clown had to tell Shadman to remove the images. Yeah, it's crazy. And also, people were, like, he put it on, like, other stuff. Like, somebody bought, like, a phone case with that art of Keemstar's daughter. It's disgusting. He took one image, he took down one image, the very bad one with Trump got removed, the other was not. Yeah, and even the other one's disgusting, you know? So, you guys like the stream? True. Please press the like button on the stream. Consider subscribing, super chatting, become a becoming a member if you like the content. Thank you. Shadman. It's a name you've probably heard if you've been in this part of the internet for any amount of time. A name so infamous, the mere utterance of it is considered a meme. A person so infamous, he's created a supervillain-like cult of personality, all hinged on going where no one else will go. However, most who know him only know just that the name, and usually have some kind of negative connotation attached thereafter. Most only know him for a few extremely notorious events where his name has become embroiled in controversy, and very few people are capable of truly assessing his character. Not many of this earth have managed to bamboozle the likes of Colossal is Crazy and basically the entire internet community all at once. Even fewer have managed to simultaneously make Keemstar look like a victim, while also maintaining relevance for years following and being fangirled by some of the most popular figures online. But. To truly understand the position that Shadman was in at the height of his controversies, we must first examine his rise, both to fame and as an artist. It's worth noting that little is actually known about Shadman's personal life beyond what he said himself, so take all that information with a grain of salt. Instead of listing off a bunch of superficial qualities about where he's from or what his name is, let's talk about his actions. According to episode 27 of the podcast, Sleepy Cabin, Shad originally lived in Switzerland, where he attended an art university. However, he was promptly kicked out after staff discovered the risque half of his portfolio for real wow whatever you think of keems are drawing literal c sam of his daughter's reprehensible yeah it's disgusting the thing i don't understand about people and the lily thing when it's a 100 percent fake character they go up the walls but then when it meets the definition of cp based on an actual child crickets well apparently yeah i don't know what i think it is and i theorized this a while back i think it's just that people didn't like keemstar so they thought oh you know, anything that happens to him, whatever, they don't care. It's like the same thing. People, people do this all the time with people they hate. If something bad happens to them, they, they just don't give a f They don't care. If it happened to anybody else, they would be up in arms about it. But because it's Keemstar and, you know, they don't like him, it's, oh, whatever. I don't give a f Or even like, oh, he probably did something to deserve it, right? Which is so f***ed up. So, yeah. And it's, and it, you know, when you do something bad to somebody, 
them being a bad person doesn't make it right. It's still bad. Yeah, okay, what did his daughter do? Exactly. His daughter didn't do anything. She was eight, eight years old, you know? It's so, it's such a violation. It's a violation in, in so many levels, you know? They happened to Kim's daughter, not the guy they hate with the... Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. But he knew that it would affect Keemstar, right? So... Shaman Drew, Edward getting assaulted by death when he died of cancer. I have no idea why anyone liked him after that because this is before the CSEM. I've never understood the hype for Shabman. He's vile and his art tacky and is tacky in mid. Like, that's who people were defending. Nuts. He was a Newgrounds creator, so I think... I think that's what it was. He had a little cult of following because of that. Anyways. Causing them to report him to the authorities. According to the podcast, he was expelled and deemed a menace to society. Used themselves. One of them was criminal psychology. But one of them was in the justice department. <laughs> oh my god. Then god. they broke the bomb and said, we found some stuff on your website, which is highly illegal. And we cannot allow you back Illegal. On, the, on the campus. Oh, well. Because you are a menace <laughs> to society. Wait, wait, wait. So he admitted on the Sleepy Cabin podcast. By the way, Psychic Pebbles is one of the people on this podcast. Psychic Pebbles is one of the co-creators of Smiling Friends. So this, this Sleepy Cast or Sleepy Cabin podcast, they knew that he had he he had stuff on his computer that was illegal that he got kicked him out of the art university that's wild that's well so they knew yeah not a good look yeah no no it's not hmm. correction country shaman came to america because he was labeled as a criminal in his own country that's wild he left Sweden because of the CSAM investigation. Jesus. Yeah, weird cartoon fan art doesn't get you kicked out of school. CP does. Yeah. So gross. Oh, Switzerland. Okay. Okay. He left Switzerland. You said that exactly? Yes. You know, that is yes. society. They made me sign a thing accepting that, that you, I That am. you're a menace. You're, yes. Son, it's a menace. You're a menace. You are officially a menace. Yeah, you are. Legally, you are a menace. This would be the start of a long career of provocation. Still wanting to pursue a career in art, Shad did the odd freelance job before finally making his break online, garnering attention after launching both his website and Newgrounds account in 2009. This would be where his initial online notoriety and presence began to take shape. In 2011, he drew art of his own mother. The following year, internet animator Ed Gould, creator of popular webcomic turned serial animation Ed's World, would tragically pass away due to cancer. Shadman lived with the people on that podcast. They knew what he did entirely. Wait, really? What? Answer. While many outpoured with support for Ed, his colleagues, friends, and family after the loss, Shad had something else in mind entirely. Shadman depicted Ed being brutally molested by the Grim Reaper. For most people, this would be enough for them to be shunned by the community at large, but somehow, Shad consistently seemed to escape that isolation. The aforementioned podcast was what painted the initial sympathetic portrait of Shadman, an edgy provocateur hell-bent on making everyone mad and having fun doing it. Though offensive, ultimately harmless. Everyone on the podcast, including Psychic Pebbles, Oni, Rice Pirate, and Spazkid were eager to defend his behavior and stances, citing that his offensive artwork is not worthy of expulsion and they were infringing on his freedom of expression. They would also mock those who were outraged at him constantly on the podcast. But, but, <laughs> but they're like, red. They're like <laughs> telling me that to prove that they're nothing but an agents of treachery themselves. Right. By like denying my rights to express myself in my own free time yeah. completely independent. Disconnected from what you from what But it was illegal, bro. It's not just your own free time. You said yourself it was illegal. Hello? What I do in school. It's still this seems to be the source of most people's inclination. I wonder how Psychic Pebbles feels about this now. Yeah, he was friends with their favorite artists, people who were funny, popular, and talented at creating artwork. He was part of the in-group. For a time, Shadman even lived with one of the hosts, Rice Pirate. He's made several popular memes, been paid tribute to by animators like Senor Palo, and is treated by the hosts of Sleepy Cabin like that uncle who says stuff just to scare you. But even back in the day, the truth is that Shadman was much closer to a different type of uncle. What they failed to mention on this podcast is why Shadman was expelled, and specifically why he sought refuge from Swiss authorities. In a post from October 5th, 2010, Shad writes that he was forced to remove all 
images from his site because of laws in Switzerland that prohibited depicting underage people in art. If you don't mind me asking, how exactly did your artwork get you in trouble? Switzerland has some law against underage persons involved in sexual activity in art. The issue of Lollicon is something that's debated pretty intensely online, with lots of people getting into trouble for their takes on the subject. For the unaware, Lolly is artwork of children in sexual situations. While some may defend its right to exist, many express disgust with it and seek to cast out those who are involved in the creation or enjoyment of that kind of content. So, when Shadman began explicitly focusing on drawing art of characters that resemble children, it was inevitable that he was going to receive a lot of backlash. But to his friends and his fans, this was simple to defend. It was disconnected from reality, and like his previously controversial artworks, were only done to provoke. Ignoring that this art was directly enabling and he was now receiving funding from at the very least, at this point, his behavior was defensible. But it was soon that these defenses would be heavily strained when in 2016, Shad began drawing art of real children. It's so gross, dude. So gross. In the months leading up to the 2016 presidential election, Shad was gaining a lot of attention. This was due to the recent popularity of his Overwatch art, as well as his political-centric comics, such as Hill Lolly Clinton. On November 8th, an anonymous user asked Shadman on his Tumblr if he'd draw Keemstar's daughter performing oral sex with Donald Trump. At the so time, Keemstar's daughter was only seven years old. Oh, she was seven? She wasn't even eight? That's so gross, dude. Who does that? What is wrong with people? Shadman took a screenshot of the post and stated on Twitter that he'd do it if Donald Trump won. So, three days later, when Donald Trump won the election, Shadman decided to post art of Keemstar's daughter as a compromise for the bet. While not explicitly suggestive, the implications of even putting this image on his largely lollicon-centric site was enough to cause backlash. In response, Keemstar simply stated that he was calling the cops, not wanting to feed more attention to someone who was capable of doing even worse. So, one of his good friends came to bat for him instead. That friend would be Colossal is Crazy, one of Keemstar's podcast co-hosts, as well as a popular YouTuber in his own right, for videos which have often covered sexual predators like Lion Maker. After first calling Shad out on Twitter, he was eventually brought onto his stream, where the two had a surprisingly civil conversation. In this stream, Shadman admits that he may have gone too far. He flatters Colossal, stating that because he respected him, he was going to take down the image. Totally understand. You understand? that it was obviously part of like the, the the controversial nature of the picture to post it under such context it started off as a controversial joke yes and you didn't go you didn't go through with it i wouldn't I, I... is there any confirmation of who asked him to draw it no it was anonymous it was an anonymous asker on tumblr on a side note his art is just bad quality is it i don't know it seems like ever there are like a lot of shabman fans so vile yeah what on earth did i just walk join in on so what we're covering right now is Shadman. We're, we're looking at Turkey Tom's video about who Shadman is. The reason why this is relevant is because recently Ava Chris Tyson was accused of a whole bunch of things, right? Accused of like potential of like attempting to groom somebody, um, even though the, the victim in quotation marks says that, th you know, that's not true. Accused of being inappropriate which is more accurate, and also of being friends with Shadman and owning Shadman's art. And so, while I don't, I don't think that the grooming allegations are very strong at all for Ava Chris Tyson, I do think that the bigger story here, well, obviously, Ava was being inappropriate, making inappropriate jokes with minors, but also the biggest story here is that Ava was friends with Shadman, followed Shadman, liked Shadman's work, bought Shadman's artwork. Yeah, that's that's where the big story is. That is the biggest story here. He did an explicit one with Trump. Yeah, he made one of Keemstar's daughter, you know? He thinks so highly of himself for drawing Lolly. Yeah, it's gross, dude. I stole your kidney to be controversial. Yeah. Yeah. You mean linking porn to minors? Forgot that part. Oh, I didn't see that part. Okay, well, that's that's also in a, very inappropriate. I would have never. I would have never. I did draw a picture of Keemstar's daughter in kind of like Obviously, she's not naked, but I do feel like there are sexual connotations regarding that picture. Would you agree? Totally agree. That, yes, totally agree. Uh, Colossal, I, I respect you, uh, like, a hell of a lot. And just, like, man to man. The Shad and stuff with Chris was posted over, exposed over a year ago. They posted their Shad paintings online. Why do people care now? Because of the nature of what Chris is being accused of. Chris is being accused of being inappropriate with minors. Um, and... The very fact that people still continue to associate with Shadman after he drew a picture of Keemstar's daughter, who is eight years old, performing oral sex on Donald Trump, 
That is disgusting that anybody would associate with this person after that. Man, if you if you think it would be better for me to take it down, I would take it down just out of respect if to you. you. Could do that, I think that would be wonderful. You know, I, I'm gonna go do that right now. I'm gonna take it down out of respect to Colossal. I I appreciate you doing that. I'm gonna go do it, and obviously it's gonna be all over. Is already out there, yeah. So I, I understand. Where Colossal expected a combative provocateur, he was instead met with someone who seemed reasonable. But the emphasis here is on the seem. Shad makes multiple concessions throughout the video, that he will take the image down and never cross this line again. But following the conversation, he fell through on both, deciding to keep the- That's so wild. That's so wild, he refused to take it down. People were buying merch with one of these pictures that he drew of Keemstar's daughter to post up on his website, as well as continue drawing very similar art in the following months. Whether he ever had any intention of making amends is unclear, but it comes across as a blatant lie to Clown's face. In a later edit to the description of the drawing, Shad writes that he was keeping the art archive to prove that it was not porn, and that he would not draw any more of it. He then claims that he never actually considered going through with anything actually explicit. Well, that's great, right? Sure, he didn't take the art down, but his rationale was believable. The problem is, that promise of never drawing suggestive art of children was broken only three days later. Before Ava Tyson's Shabin piece depicts an autistic child with, an, with a Queen of Spades tattoo, apparently filleting a loaded revolver. Yeah, see, that's also incredibly inappropriate. Incredibly inappropriate. She became Soph and was deleted from YouTube, Lieutenant Corbus was an important figurehead in the commentary community. After receiving a shout-out from Pyrocynical, she was an up-and-coming creator most notable for posting above-average commentary videos while being just 11 years old. However, her newfound success as a young e-celebrity wasn't met without its blights, one of which came when Shadman started watching her videos. On November 18th, 2016, Shad continued his trend of drawing real-life lolly art when he drew Lieutenant Corbus pose sexually with a microphone over a vaporwave backdrop, with some very explicit captions accompanying them. Keep in mind that this girl was new to being a celebrity at the time, and once again, was just 11 years old. A post from the Sleepy Cabin podcast subreddit from around this time questioned if Shad had gone too far, with one of the common defenses for his art being the top reply in the thread. I don't think he'd put so much effort into an epic troll as you put it. I think he was doing it for a bit of fun, but also because it's what he enjoys doing. It's completely separated from reality for him. Linking the girl's YouTube was a bad move, but he doesn't control what his fans do or say. Nothing of real effect is going to come from a drawing He's trend, so gross. ultimately. It's very funny to this me- dude's obsessed with drawing underage people obsessed with drawing underage people like this dude has a problem a serious problem like it's not just that he likes it it's that he's compelled to do this he can't help himself did this comment both claims that shad's art is completely disconnected from reality and has no bearing on it while also acknowledging that the person he drew is a real little girl and that he links lieutenant corbus's youtube page Ew, at the time so like gross. do these people forget that children aren't meant to be exposed to explicit materials they're in not they're not supposed to be exposed to that stuff this this is a child. It's so gross. Remember, he literally went to prison for murdering a homeless man? I didn't know that. Like, yeah, it's like it's bad enough that you like this, that you consume this. But the fact that you have so little self-control that you have to draw it and you have to involve real life people in this. There's something seriously wrong with your brain. He murdered a homeless man while high. I didn't know about that in general. Nonetheless, of themselves, do you think there are no potential negative repercussions to a child being sexualized to a large audience? I normally oh, am not someone to girl. say that feel influencers so bad for her. should be responsible for their fans, but one has to wonder what kind of behavior Shad was encouraging by drawing an 11-year-old in this fashion, and even linking her channel for all of his fans to see in the same post. What kind of audience is he looking to attract? And what kinds of things does he want them to say about the subjects of his drawings? On an unrelated note, here are some images of Shad's fans getting the underage people depicted to sign his artwork. By this point, Shadman's name was becoming toxic. While some still tried to defend his actions under the guise of it not being explicitly not safe for work, it did little to negate the overwhelming body of evidence that was forming. There was, at the very least, a small level of plausible deniability. But this is where the narrative truly breaks for his defenders. Because while everyone was focusing on Shad drawing children in the context of YouTubers, this entire time, Shad was modeling porn based on child actors. Art of Emma Watson as Hermione Granger when she was 10 years old, art of Millie Bobby Brown when she was 12. But what would finally catch the attention of the public and eventually get Shadman into it's legal so trouble was his depiction of Daphne Keene after her role as X-23 in the film Logan. On January 24th, 2017, leaked Discord messages from Shadman showed him posting set photos of Daphne Keene, captioning her as being molested and calling her an IRL lolly after watching interviews.
Ew. Yeah, this is what caused it. This is what caused his website to go down. This is what caused him, it caused his website to go down. Like, literally this, this poor child. Of her. More messages from the 6th of March show Shad stating that he'll be re-watching the film alone so that he can once again see his girl. Daphne Keen. While some have shed doubt on the veracity of these messages, it's hard to believe they're not real when only three days later, Shad posted an eight-image set of the actress being brutally molested onto his website. She is depicted severely beaten, scarred, and covered in urine. At the time, she was only 12. That's these so images gross. caught the attention of Null. Are you serious? So, okay, not only did he draw her explicitly, he draw drew her being a See, his girl. Daphne Keen. While some have shed doubt on the veracity of these messages, it's hard to believe they're not real when only three days later, Shad posted an eight-image set of the actress being brutally molested onto his website. She is depicted severely beaten, scarred, and covered in urine. At the time, she was only 12. These images caught the attention of Null, the site owner and head administrator of Gossip Forum Kiwi Farms. Dude, how can any of these people, like, how can anybody back this person up? Imagine being that that twelve year old. Imagine even being that that girl. Imagine even being Keemstar's daughter. Like it is for a grown woman to be depicted that way again, like without your knowledge or consent in an artwork piece. It is is it's uncomfortable. It's weird. It's it's creepy. It's you feel very violated by that. I can only imagine as a child before you even reached adulthood being violated that way. Having people making art of you, not only getting molested, but getting, you know, like, like for grown women, it's, it's a prop for grown women. It's, it's, I, yeah, I have no words for it. I have no words for it because it's just, it's such a violating experience. And then they're doing this to, to children. Those kids have not even been able to enjoy their youth before somebody is using their likeness and their body without their consent and it's it's just like i i hope they didn't have knowledge of this you know i hope these kids didn't have knowledge of this but i know that they did imagine growing up with that your formative years you know growing up with this thought that people are sexualizing me to the point of making fan art of me being in multiple ways I'm drawing it is disgusting. People hyping him up is so insane to me. I can't even comprehend it. Yeah, dull and dark. I have no idea how you could impact that with your child. I don't know either. How would you do that? How would you, how would you even talk to your child about that? But it was Keemstar's daughter, so nobody cared. It's so f***ed up. But he drew Lieutenant Corbis. He drew pictures of... I can't show any of these pictures because they're all... He drew pictures of Daphne Keene from Logan being by her co-star, Hugh Jackman. And not just like on and on and brutalized and like mauled like a bear by Hugh Jackman as a, as the Wolverine. Disgusted with his behavior, Null reported Shadman to Daphne Keene's talent agency. And once someone started saying that I was a Karen because I had reported Shadman to the talent agency of Daphne Keene for drawing her being by Hugh Jackman, I was like, okay causing Shad to receive a cease and desist email from her lawyers. Shadman decided to publish the email himself on April 10th, claiming X-23 was simply a fictional character who looked too much like the actress. The message read, Dear site operator and host provider, We are Good job, Null. Genuinely, yeah, really, seriously. You know? And counsel for actress Daphne Keene, a 12-year-old minor. <laughs> we have become aware that the website shadbase.com has created and posted anime cartoon images expressly depicting our client naked and engaging in sexual acts. This caused Shad to not only go offline for a few weeks, but his site to be dropped by its host entirely. This destroyed any semblance of the defense that Shad does not sexualize any actual children. With Shad not only clearly drawing art based on the actress, but sexualizing the actress herself in the leaked Discord DMs. This isn't even accounting for the fact that this is only one example. This exact evidence exists for Liev Schreiber's son, who cosplayed as Harley Quinn in 2017. At the time, his son was only 9 years old. In this Discord message, Shadman can be seen pointing out his genitalia. And yet, so in gross. spite of all this, undeniable proof that Shadman draws art of real kids, undeniable proof that Shadman uses the term lolly as a stand-in for real children, undeniable proof that Shadman obsesses over child actors before drawing erotic art of them for his website, his defenders remained. In the replies to his tweet revealing litigation, fellow artist Scudbutt claims that what Shadman drew was just as bad as the violence in the film, and to this day, 
the host of Sleepy Cabin, who gave Shad his initial sympathetic portrait back in 2015, continue to associate with him in spite of the controversies. It leaves one big question. What makes Shadman so special from people who have consistently riled against other moral outrages, even sparking the backlash against the artist behind New Guy for encouraging shoplifting? Why does Shadman receive special treatment? That's so strange. Yeah, other artists will get way more backlash for way less. Jail, under the jail immediately. I have no clue how Chad didn't go to jail. I think that a lot of people online have a knee-jerk reaction to people like Noel and Keem. They're just automatically bad people, even though they can't immediately name a reason why. Yeah, I agree with that. But Count Dinkula comes out and he says the sh I have a screenshot of it somewhere. Count Dinkula comes out against Lollicon and who is he following on Twitter? Who Who is he following on Twitter? Oh, he's following Shadman. Like, it seems like even in people who have negative opinions about this sh Shadman is consistently the f exemption to any kind of criticism about this sh and I, I don't understand why. He's not special. He's not funny. His art is, like, passe. We're past shock value. That's why people don't go to ED anymore. This is not funny or interesting. Anybody can can make this kind of shit. But, but you're going to follow him. He, and he interacts with the people from Zone. He interacts with the people from Pornhub and shit. And it's just like everybody gives him a pass. And it's like, why? Out of all the artists to do this to, out of all the artists to give a pass to why shadman why shadman why shadman the primary defense various figures have in remaining friends with shadman is that they don't inherently condone his behavior they argue that they've simply been friends with him before he became the ultimate edgelord and so have remained good pals both publicly and privately firstly shadman was always the ultimate edgelord as mentioned before he fled his country back in 2011 for drawing of underage people. But even in spite of that, this goes beyond just association. They claim to be friends with him, but don't condone his behavior because to them, he's a nice guy. Let's look back at Shadman's interaction with Clown from 2016. Wait, what? Well, yeah, I, I, I... I'm not, okay, I'm not sure I'm understanding. We're gonna rewind a little bit. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, Keem started off as a, as like an Xbox troll, right? So when you l realize that he started off as an Xbox troll, it makes a lot more sense of like the person that he was, right? And he has grown a lot over the years. My feelings on Null are complicated as an OG Christian troll. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh, sorry, does PZ mentioned you, censored your name recently? Really? When? Where? That's so funny. Did they call me Space Dust again, or did they censor my name again? Did they, like, t treat my name like a curse word? Because that's super funny. So. Why? Out of all the artists to do Thanks, this, uh, out don't of all the artists to give a Pass to why Shadman? Why Shadman? Why Shadman? The primary defense various figures have in remaining friends with Shadman is that they don't inherently condone his behavior. They argue that they've simply been friends with him before he became the ultimate edgelord, and so have remained good pals both publicly and privately. Firstly, Shadman was always the ultimate edgelord. As mentioned before, he fled his country back in 2011 for drawing of underage people. But even in spite so of this goes beyond just association. They claim to be friends with him, but don't condone his behavior because to them, he's a nice guy. Let's look back at Shadman's interaction with Clown from 2016. Well, yeah, I, I, I taking it down right now, taking it down on Twitter too. And I don't want to take up any more of your time. I know you're probably a busy guy with the podcast and all, so. No, it's no problem at all. And thank you so much for doing that. I do appreciate it. I'm sure Keemstar will appreciate it. I'm sure a lot of other people will appreciate it. So thank you again. Won't happen again. H have a nice day, Colossal. And you, man. And you. There you go, guys. You can't, you can't resist the charm of Colossal. He wants me to take it down. I don't, I never take shit down, but for him, for, you know, I, I just learned my lesson here. Recall how Shadman diffused the situation. He Dress flattered- Dress like an edgy teenager. I agree with you. I agree with you. Colossal, saying that while he typically wouldn't do something, because he liked him, he'd do it to appease him. Following the stream, however, he followed through on none of his promises. He lied about removing the images, instead doubling down to draw not just Ew. more suggestive images of children, but also Ew. explicit- the clip, while many commenters don't see it, is Shad blatantly manipulating Colossal, revealing just how good he is at diffusing one-on-one -on -one interactions. He mitigated the controversy by looking good to Colossal, getting him to initially praise him and saying that he's not that bad, and just got the interaction he wanted clipped on YouTube for everyone to think he is amicable. Shadman is someone who is detested by both sides, from Tumblr callouts who pair his artwork with his edgy jokes, to Kiwi Farms, who is hosted by a former developer for 8chan. His disavowal is a non-partisan issue. Theoretically, that makes the decision to disassociate easier, but more powerful than any political alignment is social attachment. While it's true that his friends may have fond memories with Shadman, who state that his online behavior doesn't correlate with his offline behavior, that just makes them complicit. Shadman may not have physically 
the child, but he undeniably sexually harassed Daphne Keene to the point where legal action was threatened. You claim that Shadman is a genuinely good person, but that's only because he's been good to you. If one day Shad were exposed for genuinely abusing a child, by that logic, would you still defend him simply because your interactions with him were positive? The answer is no, and they're only going with his defense because it's the most comfortable for them. As mentioned before, while every single one of these controversies involving children occurred, Shadman was living with Rice Pirate Mick. It's easy to say you disavow the behavior and wash your hands of culpability, but is it really valid when you were housing him? You helped provide for him, and yet apparently just saying, well, I don't condone it, is enough? Later in the thread, Spaskid is confronted with the messages of Shad fawning over Daphne Keene before drawing art of her. His defense? Those suspect Discord things were in his cancerous public Discord server. And for context, I'm pretty sure it's all risque jokes, of which he's probably taking too far. Look, you know me, Turkey Tom. I love a good joke once in a while. But at a certain point, you have to question his intentions. And I think for most people, so they should gross. be able to recognize that it is hardly a joke when just a few days later, he drew of the child in question. There's giving someone the benefit of the doubt, and then there's just willful ignorance and lunacy. Spaskid concludes by saying that there'd be no point in cutting ties with Shadman, as he's become synonymous with Newgrounds. He then implies that Shad's critics are snowflakes, who live in echo chambers and avoid anything that slights them a little bit. In spite of his claim, this isn't simple guilt by association. These are people who not only actively run defense for him, as evidenced by Spaskid saying they're just jokes, but also give him a place to stay. And perhaps the most surprising element is how willingly the public Public goes with it. The key question to this entire section, the basis of the cult of Shadman, is why he receives that special treatment. Shadman is considered part of the site's old guard, as Spaskid admits himself. If not for the various podcast episodes, Let's Play episodes, and promotional runs where they plug his site and merchandise, it's doubtful he would have been given the same pass he does today. So OMFG, hot take, but sometimes heinous people can treat others nicely. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Ted Bundy and several other serial killers were known as nice and lovely people, which is how they got away with it for so long. Ted Bundy literally saved a kid from drowning and killed 30 women. Yeah. Also, hi, JP. Welcome to the stream. Oh, God, dude. One thing that I'll never understand is how, how Jeffrey Dahmer got away with what he did for so long. Because that dude was not charismatic. That dude was weird, you know? Jesus. His trick is to attach himself to fringe groups, not bad people, just just smaller. From that, it's born a stronger bond, and they will more remiss to cut the ties because of fringe feelings of isolation. It was racism? Yeah, no, it was absolutely racism. Yeah, Absolutely racism. How Dahmer got away with stuff for so long. No one but Shad knows what he does in private. He may be nice to his friends, but that doesn't mean they know him. It's your fault for thinking it's disgusting to drop of real-life children, and you're just a snowflake for trying to cancel him. If they want to continue to associate with him, they're free to. But this idea that they're removed of all responsibility simply because they claim to not condone his behavior is laughably stupid. At a certain point, you really just have to reap what you've been sowing for so goddamn long. In early 2019, Shadman announced that due to various controversies threatening his livelihood, he would no longer be drawing art of children. I have a lot to lose. I have built a life and I have a lot to lose, so if I make the wrong and lose everything because of it, that might have been a mistake. I'm still trying to push the envelope in my own ways, but I can't draw lolly wipe comics anymore. Thank you, don't smell bad. I might get into trouble. While it's somewhat comforting to know that he won't be continuing, it's worth pointing out that this was a purely economic decision. For years, Shadman profited off of his market of and now, realizing his entire online presence is being threatened because of it, has chosen to stop after a cost-benefit analysis. Regardless, at the very least, that era of his persona seems to be at an end, as Shad returns to drawing freelance work. To a certain extent, Shad's defenders have a point. It is too late to disavow him, and attempts to cancel him are fruitless. And so it appears that for now, Shadman's antics will be largely excused by people who continue to claim to still have any moral character. It's unfortunate that many are falsely accused of being creeps, when the real ones are often lying in plain sight. In that sense, Shadman's repeated sexualization of children shall remain an open secret, akin to the likes of Hollywood. And just like Hollywood, he'll once again be given the pass. Because to those close to him, it's the easiest thing to do. Make of that what you will. I've been Turkey Tom. Thanks for watching. And until next time, leave me alone. Fair enough. Dude. Can't draw lowly because woke. Yeah, seriously. It's not even just the lowly part. It's the fact that some of it was based off of real people. I know way too much about Shabman now. I know way too much. He still draws a 
porn? Yeah. The woke mind virus has gone too far. Shami reminds me of that dude who groomed those twins, and him and his friends just made jokes about it. The guy... Friends, I can't think of his name. So much I want to say that's against TOS right now. Based on what chat says, you'd think that Dimer only killed black people. No, I mean, he killed multiple... He killed a couple of white... I think he killed one or two white people. Then he killed a decent amount of black people, and he killed a asian person as well but the reason why people say it was racism first last that caused him to get away with it for so long is because his neighbors he lived in a primarily black neighborhood and his neighbors had been complaining to the police for quite some time and the police never took them seriously um they even complained to the police when a minor a 14 year old boy had run out of Dahmer's apartment the police showed up and escorted the boy back to Dahmer's apartment where he was later killed, you know? So that's why people say it was racism because all of these neighbors were calling the police and the police were not doing anything. And in, even in one case, took one of those victims, a 14-year-old boy who they didn't check his ID, they didn't check his age, they took him back to Dahmer's place and he got killed there later. It's just crazy to me. Anyways, it's a prime example of degeneracy escalating to become harmful. He went from fictional characters to real people, and next thing you know, it could get to the point where he looks at real CSAM or harms a child. Yeah, it's so scary. That account was horrifying. That one woman trying to save the boy and the cops sending him to his death. Yeah. Didn't one of those cops also get promoted? Both of them did, I believe. They initially were, like, suspended, I think, and then they, they appealed or something, and then they got promoted or something. I don't know weird i just almost want to tweet about this you know but i don't want to tweet too fast because we know what happens yeah i'm gonna tweet about it that's one thing but dude was so openly disgusting towards children i don't know how they wouldn't mr beast was directly staring at it that's so gross dude that's so gross yeah no i also am somebody who's like in recent years come around to being you know, generally pro law enforcement, and even he, there's no way you can look at the Dahmer situation and not realize that it was racism. You know, my problem, not a big one, but still bothers me, is that the Shadman problem is actually at least currently overshadowing the Ava problem. <laughs> nice one, H and K. What did Jeffrey tell his mother when she told him that she didn't like his friends? That's okay, mom. Just eat the noodles. Jesus Christ. Frequently made. Jesus Christ. Sorry, guys. I'm just typing up a tweet right now. Here's what I've learned so far. Shadman made art of multiple minors in sexually explicit scenarios, some of them being in multiple ways. I can phrase that better. Some in extremely hardcore situations. Frequently made sexually explicit comments about minors in Discord, was even fixated on specific minors, was kicked out of art school and fled Switzerland because he got into trouble for his drawings. How people continue to associate with him after him getting into legal trouble for sexually harassing a minor is unexplainable to me. If they didn't know his history, that's one thing. But the dude was so openly disgusting towards children, I don't know how they wouldn't know. Jesus. Yeah, I think I'm gonna tweet that. I guess it could be possible. But the dude was so openly disgusting towards children, I don't know how. Yeah, if they didn't know his history, that's one thing. And I guess it could be possible. But the dude was so openly disgusting towards children, I don't know how they wouldn't know. That's so gross. That's so gross. Okay. All right, moving on from that. That was a good video by Turkey Tom. That was a good video. So moving on from that, let's look at the original Chris Tyson allegation video. And apparently this video is not good. So we're just gonna watch it. We're gonna see. Though I do need to take a quick five minute bio break, okay? I remember I unfollowed Spencer for some reason, but I can't remember what. He made it openly known to his friends. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But we still will cover some politics as well, but I want to cover this horrible video apparently that was made on Chris Tyson. And because his video is so horrible, it, like, it's just like, you know, all the commentary people are saying like, oh, you know, like, Chris is not going to be held accountable because his video was so badly done, you know? I'm more, look, I'm not concerned about Chris in general. I just think the Shabin stuff is crazy. It's crazy. Dude, Elvis the alien deleted his Twitter account. That's crazy. Hi, Copensee. Is that Jenny or is that Beckett? That's crazy. Elvis the Alien literally deleted his Twitter account. So crazy. Who's Elvis the Alien? Somebody who is also, like, friends with Shadman. It's Jenny. Hello, Jenny. Yeah, I mean, again, I hold the, the view that it doesn't matter how bad somebody is. If somebody does something 
horrible to them, that thing is still horrible. You know? Elvis commissioned Shadman once for a thumbnail. Jesus, dude. What? You can still hold someone accountable. There are more videos out there that are better. Yeah, no, I know. I know, but like, you'll see. You'll see what, I, what, I'm, what I'm talking about when we go through this, okay? Yeah, dude. Elvis the alien... I don't know. I didn't have any bad feelings towards him before I became a content creator. And then as, as I got more into the content creator space, I've started, I, I've started seeing certain people differently, right? So Elvis the Alien is one of those people who I was pretty neutral on prior to seeing his interactions with other content creators. And then I saw his interactions with other content creators and I'm like, oh, this guy is kind of a, this guy is kind of a cocksucker, you know? He just is. You know, one thing I would say about him is I respected his, his merch game, right? His, his, the way he did his merch is that, like, it was the type of merch that you would want if you were a content creator, right? Um, ah, dude, I hate these people. I hate Twitter right now. It, it, like, it, it's the type of merch that you know, it doesn't look like it's from a YouTuber, basically. It just looks like clothing so yeah but we should we shouldn't be focusing on the fact that she has a different identity the issue is for me at least she had a csam drawn image and also has a child that's disgusting and brings horrifying possibilities yeah i don't know that there's enough evidence here for me to make any claims about what chris tyson has done in person but i do think that the association with shabman knowing shabman's history is a bit yikesy you know so